Hi, I'm Paul and I'm here with uh, Keith, who's my dad, uh, who went to the 1955 World Scout Jamboree in Canada. And I thought we'd ask him a few questions just to share the experiences that he had all those years ago going to such a fabulous event. So what, what do you remember of the event? Well, it was the eighth World Jamboree, number eight. And I remember having to go to selection weekends in Bath where there was quite a lot of scouts doing various things and we had lots of activities and we were marked and then ultimately two of us were selected, myself and uh, Robert Pausland, um, to do the trip. And uh, I remember that bit very well. Then, of course, we had to raise money for the trip, which meant various... Uh, district activities and individual activities and of course supported by your parents etc and the group the group was the 20 i belong to the 23rd avondale seascape troop in bath strange being an inland town but we were on the river and we had a number of kayaks and uh dinghies that we used um, so we got our seascape, seascape bit done so yes and then coming up to the event I remember we had to fly from Heathrow um, and I expect many of you will know what Heathrow is like now but in 1955 it was just a small conglomeration of huts etc and we flew on an air france super constellation and it took us something like 20 hours to get to toronto uh having stopped off in newfoundland uh, when we were in got to toronto I, w I was met by my aunt and uncle who provided uh, local hospitality uh prior to going to the jamboree uh, and then we went to the Jamboree, which was on Niagara on the Lake, which is a fantastic little place and well worth a visit even these days. We camped in the woods there, or our, our sub camp was in the woods, Bonaventure, I think it was, um, which was close to the the river. Um, and one thing that I do remember from it was the first time that we'd encountered charcoal because our cooking was on little charcoal burners and uh, we'd never had charcoal before. So that was interesting. And then one thing that we found out coming from the UK, which 55, there was still an element of austerity about after the second world war was the um volume of food that they provided we had a, a menu book that they provided and we had to go each day to collect our food um and to be honest after a few days we were taking food back because they were providing much too much for us whereas maybe the americans and the canadians could eat it all and ask for a bit more um, I remember that, and I remember the UK presentation in the arena when there was, we did lots of gymnastic things, um, which was quite interesting, and of course meeting other scouts, those that camped next to us, and we would do what you still do today, and that's go and have food with them, talk with them, uh, <clears throat> and Toronto has a very large agricultural exhibition once a year um, and the scouts that were there were asked to be involved in the opening ceremony and so we had to go and march into the big park uh, where this uh, exhibition was taking place and uh, I remember myself and uh, another lad from our group who was also a seascape we had to carry the Great Britain banner at the front of our contingent, which was um, made one quite proud. <clears throat> so that that was it. 
and uh, of course we had trips to Toronto and trips to Niagara Falls um, and more recently probably about five years ago traveled back to Canada and actually went back to the site to see what it was like and I must admit I do remember it um, and it was quite interesting yeah so tell me a bit about sub camp life you what did you do during um, the day what were the activities well, like sub camp well you know I think it's exactly the same as it is now only probably not quite so developed with regard to today's you know wall climbing and zip wiring and that sort of thing we were very much more self contained in doing our own thing with sports uh, and visits and scouting activities uh, pioneering um, etc which was probably slightly less uh, involved in energetic or if that's the right yeah not probably the right word but um, less in, less involved with activities like like you have today and uh, when you uh, what were your friends thinking uh, your school friends because obviously well, you were one of very few that went that was very interesting yes they were all a bit miffed because um, at my school where I was um, there were very few skates and so they were sort of not not over interested but were interested because they were sort of gosh you're going to school but what i do remember is our geography teacher when i'd come back actually stood up and said we're doing geography which is slightly different then than it is today saying we're going to study xyz countries but when we come to canada we'll be asking Keith Walker to tell us all about it, which made all the others a bit jealous. <laughs> yeah. And um, what, um, what do you think you uh, used to, what's your fondest memories of the Jamboree? What one, what's the one standout moment uh, that you can... Do you know, I, I, I don't think there is one really. I mean, it was, it was, it was all one big experience. And I think if I add anything to that, I just say that whatever you do when you grow, you grab everything to do. And that will smooth out whether there is any highlights or lowlights. If you grab everything, there won't be any lowlights. You enjoy it all. And that's what you must do. Mm. And what, what final piece of advice would you give to the young people going to the Jamboree? in 2019 right <clears throat> the first thing is i am highly jealous um i did go to the world jamboree in chelmsford for 23 days to work as an adult and that was fantastic and all i can think of now is the atmosphere in the comradeship that there was at the jamborees um both jamborees and I would just say you have to grab it and you have to grab it hard and take every, every opportunity that stands up in front of you and get fully involved. Don't stand back and say, oh, I don't want to do that. That's not skating. Get in there and do it and enjoy it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Keith, uh, Dad, and uh, we'll certainly send you some photos from, Good. Uh, from America. Yeah.